Hi Fred, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. So, congratulations on the EP coming out in a few days now. Most songs uh, of the debut album have already been written by you when Joey contacted you and he just added a few parts, if I remember it correctly. How was it with these songs? Were they leftovers from the album or did you sit down together to write them now again? Uh, no, they were not leftovers, but uh, as soon as the album was recorded, I mean, I, I kind of never really stopped working on songs. So, um, and because everybody's so far away from each other, it is still difficult to actually write together, you know. So, uh, the contribution, I, I still write most of the stuff, and uh, the contribution is the same. I just uh, send the, the songs, the demos to the guys, and uh, and they, uh, they add their parts, uh, they change, uh, you know, because I'm not really a good drummer so I just you know write basic stuff and then uh, <coughs> and then Joe is free to do uh, what he wants uh, based on those demos uh, demos so uh, so yeah now uh, Ashes was the first song I wrote probably around the time the album came out really because I was already thinking of like oh okay uh, you know we need to we need to carry on with that I'm not because I, I didn't want to stop there anyway and uh, because we didn't go on tour, uh, that's why I thought about, uh, we, we, we thought that it'd be great to have a, uh, <coughs> a little something to give to the fans uh, before uh, the actual tour and uh, the real album. So that's why that EP is, uh, is a little thank you for your patience and uh, uh, that's where we are right now. Hmm. The song that I personally enjoyed the most has been uh, 2099. What's the meaning behind this number? Uh, <laughs> I googled it, but I couldn't find anything really. <laughs> no, it, it's, ba it's based on actually... Uh, <laughs> I, I, would, I wanted it to, to remain mysterious. So, what I can say, it's, it's about something that... stuff that happened in 1000. 99 so 1000 years mm. before those so this is how the new the new heretics of uh, that i i don't want to i don't want to explain too much because i like i like the fact actually we were just i chose the title together with stefan we were like you know thinking about titles and together the, with the lyrics contact i mean we didn't actually put the lyrics of the ep either because i thought you know I, I thought it was interesting to just like let people try to figure out what the hell we're screaming about and uh, uh, I thought that the, the title with this number was just like mysterious by itself so all I'm saying is just like this is really about 1099 okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I remember in an interview with Dragon Force, you mentioned that uh, Reaching into Infinity as a title had a deeper meaning for you as being inspired by the terror attacks of the Bataclan. Did this also have an impact on your songs of Sensanum? Because they obviously leave a bit more freedom of expressing pain and frustration through the sound. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not related to uh, Bataclan or any... Well, I mean, ev everything, everything that pisses me off uh, it's going to turn into music or everything that happens in my life is going to turn into music one way or another so all the frustration, the hatred the anger, that's going to uh, be uh, in the insane uh, box, if you will and uh, the, all the happier stuff is going to the, in the Dragon Fox uh, Dragon Fox, Dragon <laughs> Force sorry, I'm extremely tired we played, we played Oslo yesterday <coughs> uh, with Dragon Force, and uh, we partied quite a lot. The singer from Sabaton was there, uh, oh. <laughs> from uh, Jim Bogie was there. I slept, I went to bed around six o'clock, and uh, today I'm in Stockholm and I'm floored on my hotel bed. So, okay. sorry if I, think, if I don't make much sense. I'm really trying hard. So, not Dragon Fox, but Dragon Force. <laughs> uh, yeah, I put, I put the happy stuff in the Dragon Force folder. But uh, I have a tendency, a natural tendency, to write more uh, darker, uh, darker things. So that's why the the, the Sinsane folder is uh, uh, has more stuff. If that makes any sense at all. Okay. Um, Maxime Tacardi, who designed your cover artwork, is a French artist basically famous for his portraits of black metal musicians painted with his own blood. At least that's how I got uh -huh. to know him. Uh, yeah. Was it you who found his work and decided to get in touch with him? It was, 
uh, it was uh, okay. What's his What's his nickname? <laughs> uh, when I when I was on tour with Love Blast because I I played with Love Blast la last year and the guitar player Drakian or is it Drakian? He has like an actual real name, mind you. You know, he's not called Drakian. <laughs> I suppose he doesn't want me to give his real name, so Drakian just check Drakian Drakian. I'm not sure, but that's not how I call him. Um, mentioned it to us, uh, Stefan, uh, because Stefan plays in Love Blast as well, as you know. Uh, we were sitting in the dressing room and he said, Hey guys, have you ever seen the, the work of uh, Maxime Tacardi? That guy would be perfect for us in Sainam. And I, and I just looked at it and just thought, fuck yeah, we're gonna write to him right now. So Stefan sent him a message and turns out Maxime really loves uh, Loud Blast and Sainam as well. So that's why we worked with him for uh, for the for the cover for the uh, and the inside of the EP as well. I don't know if you got the the actual the full version or you just heard the music. I heard the music and uh, saw the the scans of the cover basically. Okay, because there's the the, the front cover is one <coughs> is one painting and inside there's a, there's another one on the CD. Oh, it's okay. Based on, yeah, yeah. I actually originally I wanted to have one that is already done, which is like almost the same. Uh, but uh, that one he used already for one of his projects. I was bummed, I was a little bummed out, but I said, okay, can you do something sort of similar? And he sent me two versions, and I said, okay, great, I'm gonna take that both and use that for the EP. So because I, I think it's really nice, like the black and white, very uh, very raw, and it works with the, the sound and the music as well, I think. So I think it just, it, everything is works perfectly together. It does, but I was, uh a bit uh, surprised that you didn't choose the, the blood version of it because I know that he does uh, it a lot yeah no uh, well I mean we uh, I have something else that we will release later he's done some other stuff for us with blood okay but uh, I just it's, it's always it's usually I have like one vision and I like to stick to it and uh, I just wanted the whole thing to be black and white like like the, the pictures that we've done in the past I like the black and white stuff for some reason so why the, the blood would have been great as well uh, maybe that would have been a bit too much and taken the uh, the uh, attention attention away from from the actual art so i yeah, uh, yeah i just wanted something pure simple black and white <laughs> uh, you mentioned that experimenting with keys and machines is something that you're not afraid of so uh, i guess you're not one of the musicians believing that black and death metal needs to be true and cult uh, yes and no, because uh, I, I, hmm, I mean, I, I, I do believe there are certain things that needs to be done with uh, within black and, and death, and you know, um, I have my own. I guess I have my own rules, but uh, indeed we we did experiment, and it's more it's more true for the the actual Japanese bonuses because we had uh, mixes done by um, Takeshi uh, Ueda. Who's been working with? Who's been working with Black Capsule mm -hmm. Market and uh, lately with uh, his guys on them called AA Equal, and he's also done uh, work with uh, Baby Metal, Give Me Chocolate, and uh, and actually so I met the guy in Japan and uh, and I said sorry that'd be great if you could do uh, remixes like back in the days when I started to listen to uh, to uh, metal and you know like Fear Factory, Morbid Angel, mm -hmm. they done those remixes as well, well Pantera even. I think like the first, the first thing I bought from Pantera was actually like the, <coughs> the was it Mouthful War or Walk like a <coughs> sorry like a, a a single with like four tracks and there was like two remixes of uh, by Demon Be Driven and uh, Fucking Hostile with machines. So that's something I kind of grew up with and uh, and it, I still remember the, those songs actually. You know, like the, the 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 way they were they were turned out. So that's something that we done for for Japan. And as for um, as for our music, I I tend to believe like the first album was really uh, done by uh, how, how to say uh, by the book. You know, it was like pure bla death metal mm -hmm. with touches of black, but like you know, and and I guess it's it's interesting now that I have done that. I done exactly what I wanted to hear, and now I think I. I can we can allow ourselves to experiment a little bit more, but we're not gonna do like uh, the next album's not gonna be uh, you know disco and or, you know uh, 
fucking yeah <laughs> this is the people should be scared about that but i think it's nice to add more scenes and use them like like maybe uh, uh, spheres from pestilence that sort of you know scenes and mm. and whatnot or also you know elements from a ministry when it's cold and just like marshall that sort of stuff but i think that it because it worked with those those songs and some of the songs we have for the next album because it's mostly uh, it's already written more or less wow. uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> but i don't stop <laughs> but uh, so mo- mo- most of the stuff uh, it's still pure uh, death metal but yeah with certain elements here and there you know but nothing like this is it remains black and death metal so when are you planning to release it over next year the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The plan is to release the album in September next year and then to go on tour. Oh, so that's the plan. okay. So yeah, you already yeah. answered my yeah. other question as well because I know that's very, very difficult for you to go on tour and yeah. unite everyone. So, so how will you do it, actually? Well, that's why I need to plan ahead. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I need to go like, okay, this is not going to happen this year. Last year we were that close to do like a few shows and for some shitty reasons it did not happen now i've been on tour with dragon force most of the year attila is busy as hell with, mm. with mayhem uh Joe just started vimic so this year is not possible <coughs> so uh, so that's why i'm like well you know because we have time we're just gonna do another album and make sure that everybody has like a free calendar for 2018 <laughs> uh october and uh, so far it seems okay uh, but I don't want to say too much because but I think I, what, one thing I want to say though is like I could not have toured for the first album without all the members because I think that it would have given people the wrong impression that that was just a you know, studio album and then I'll oh, get someone else blah blah now that we established and we are like the team that we are is doing more than one album I'm less afraid of touring next year with like one member not being there replaced by someone else i think people will understand more and be mm-hmm. more comprehensive but i think if we, f- we would have done that for the first album i think it would have been a huge mistake but i think now people would tolerate that a bit more i hope yes that's always the, the problem with the so-called super groups but um yeah. so you're keeping the same lineup for the second album as well yeah 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 so far yes maybe <laughs> i i I have my I have my own ideas of what's going on, but so far that's that's how it is. Yes. Uh, you're very flexible when it comes to style. There's a big difference, of obviously, between Dragon Force and Sensenium, and you are from France, so obviously, I mean, French people love almost worship their own music, chanson française. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what is your yeah. favorite French song of all time? Oh, that's that's an interesting question. Thank you. Because I'm, I'm glad I don't have to talk about metal. Uh, my favorite French song, there's there's a lot of beautiful songs that I discover through the years. I always like to listen to old stuff. Uh, so I, it, it's difficult because there's a lot of uh, chansons françaises, as you said, that are very nice. Uh, uh, God, nah. Uh, I like, uh, there's a... Uh, there's a, a singer from uh, <coughs> from the late 70s, early 80s. His name is Alain Chanfort. Now this is not really chanson française like Aznavour or Edith mm-hmm. Piaf. So it's, it's a bit more, you know, like a contemporary, a little. Uh, but I really like what he's been doing. Uh, certain album, so I would recommend Alain Chanfort. The album uh, Pose, P O S P S. Uh, poses. Uh, that's a great album. Obviously, Serge Gainsbourg was uh, has done really amazing songs. Uh, then you've got like if you go even like further back in time, uh, like the you know like uh, uh, finals for my grandmother, for example. Certain songs that I don't even know the title, but I can like sort of like you know uh, sing along. Uh, uh, there's a singer called uh, Barbara. Oh, uh, yeah. She, she, yeah, and she had a song called uh, Il Pleut sur Nantes. But I don't know if you heard that one. Ah, it's no, I sad don't as fuck. <laughs> okay, really nice. I just know uh, L'Aigle Noir, and it's also very, very. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, because she has like she has ways of like. I, I was reading about it not so long ago because I, I was like she wrote the music and she had like a very uh, uh, specific way of like changing um, um, uh, 
the uh, keys within the same song. So it has that in the song, uh, in the song Il Pleut Sur Nantes. She's got, mm-hmm. you've got the intro, which is in whatever, I say, for, for argument's sake. And then up, it goes into F, but like, it's so sudden, it takes you like, oh, and it's, it's a really sad, it's a story of she wants to go and see her, her dad who's dying. Uh, she goes uh, to Nantes, but uh, turns out she's too late and the, the, it's, it's raining mm-hmm. outside and he's dead. So that's uh, something you want to listen to on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> when you're hung, hungover. <laughs> but I recommend the song, listen to that one, it's really good. How much has it influenced you when you were little? Did, did, did it take you some time to get into metal? Or did you never really listen to just French chanson with your parents? Uh, I, I mean, my parents have been listening, have, there's always been music around. So they, they're not, they were not particularly too big on French chanson. My father was listening to uh, Cliff Richard, not Keith Richards, but Cliff Richard mm-hmm. and The Shadows. So that's more like, you know, it was like the English uh, Elvis. Uh, so my father was listening to this. That's as far as I can remember. That's the the tape that was always in the car. There was that, and there there was also like the James Bond uh, soundtracks. That's the tapes that were you know when we would uh, go to the south of France, for example. So th- those those uh, because we always everybody like my mother, father, and, and myself really liked the, that uh, those songs. So we would just like play them constantly. So that I have that stuck in my head. Uh, and then my, my mother would actually like do uh, tapes, you know, like uh, listening to what was on the radio and just like make, uh, you know, mixtapes, if you want to call that, you know. But, uh, so she was doing mixtapes. And, uh, and yeah, and I, I don't know, I mean, I bought my first, <coughs> my first um, uh, small vinyl uh, EP when I was... Uh, I don't know, seven, eight, and then b- uh, around 12, that's when I discovered heavy metal. But but the music before before 12 was whatever my parents would be listening to or what I could hear on the on the radio and whatnot. So, uh, but it has obviously an influence in everything that's musical and even non-musical has an influence in the way I, I'm, I'm uh, writing music nowadays. And apart from, from music influencing you, do you also have Do you go to to the theater or cinema a lot? Uh, I've not really, not as much as I, I watch a lot of series. But cinema, I don't really go there too often. I think the last time we went to the cinema was to see, uh, well, not so long ago actually, to see It. I was a bit disappointed. And uh, I don't know, for some reason I don't really like to go to the cinema and hear all the people laughing when it's funny. It just like puts me in a shitty mood. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> So I don't really do that. Uh, theater, I don't really like. I don't really like. Uh, yeah, theater. You know, like uh, actors on stage. La la la. <laughs> that doesn't really uh, touch me as much as. Uh, and I don't really like. I've, I've never. I've never been to opera because I don't really like opera either. <coughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and also I read books and I watch. Uh, I watch uh, series, and uh, animes. A lot. Animes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you binge watching Netflix the entire day when yeah, you're on yeah, tour, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, Netflix and chill. I'm actually like, once the the, the interviews are done today, I'm gonna watch uh, Stranger Things. Everyone is watching it. I really need to start it. it. I don't even know what it's about to be honest, but everyone watches it, so I guess it's, I have to it's good. It's good if you like if you like the '80s and if you like the Goonies, then you're in for a treat. Ah, okay. Uh-huh. I might give it a try. Okay. <laughs> Uh-huh. All right, thank you so much, Fred. Well, thank you very much, Finland, for the interview. That was amazing. <laughs>